I'm here today at the Tech Open Air Festival in Berlin interviewing Matt Monahan, also known as Matty Mo. Matt, hey. how are you doing? I'm doing so good, Courtney. How are you? <laughs> Excellent. Um, I remember when you landed yesterday, you said, I'm back home. I'm in Berlin. Why do you feel like Berlin is home? The energy. The energy. And, and talk about a little, like, what is going on outside here at the Tech Open Air Festival. Most amazing energy at any tech conference I've ever been to. Absolutely. I could not agree more. Looking out there, it seems like there's a mix of Brooklyn hipsters, New York bankers, Silicon Valley entrepreneurs, but all very uniquely Berlin. And what is that? What does it mean to be uniquely Berlin? There's, I think, an emergence of culture of risk-taking here that's really exciting because traditional German culture, from as far as I know it, uh, through tales told by our good friend Nico, who throws the event, is that there's not been a culture of risk-taking. And it's really exciting to see this happening here. And so, you know, TOA is now in its second year. You've been here both years, which is pretty awesome, as have I. What do you think's different about this year versus last year? It's awesome to see the event grow so much and mature. It's really starting to take shape as its own thing, which is a combination of not only technology, but arts and music and cultural experience that, again, is uniquely Berlin. I would highly recommend it to any Silicon Valley entrepreneur, any New York entrepreneur, in fact, frankly, any entrepreneur in the world should be at an event like this. And so what did you speak about last year at TOA? Last year, I had a very deliberate conversation about how to use social advertising to acquire customers for your business in a profitable manner. This year, my talk was fundamentally different. And, and what was the title of your talk this year? The title of my talk this year was War and Porn. And was it actually on War and Porn? It was about the internet and how the internet has changed and how the internet changing has changed me. So, so this year at TOA, you spoke about war and porn. Do you want to just give us the highlights? Sure. It was a talk about the internet and how the internet has changed and how the internet has changed me. The internet was invented for war, spread through porn, and is largely used for social networking now. And with social networking, people are sharing 1% of their lives, which is not necessarily representative of their entire lives. But with social networking, you can start to craft the perception people have of you. So my talk was about not oversharing, not undersharing, but a better understanding of the tools available to us through social media and how it can affect your entrepreneurial life, your personal life, and how to start thinking a little bit more cognizantly about social media as, a, as something that's not going away. And so you're writing a book about this. Um, you are considerably an expert then in, in how to craft your own presence online through social media. What are like two or three tips that, that I could take away today and put into action? Sure. What you share online has a material impact on your reality. So if I went around sharing pictures of me going to clubs and hanging out with people that do things like that, then I'll ultimately end up hanging out with those types of people in reality. But if I post pictures of food or uh, curated events or art or inspirational quotes, I'm going to attract those types of people into my life. So what you put out there will ultimately determine the types of experiences you have in real life. So think about the types of experiences you want to have in real life and share those types of things on social media. And would you say the same thing's true of like your, your inbound information, like following the right kind of people that you do want to be around and identify with? Absolutely. That's, that's the great paradox of social media. It's such an amazing tool for information and to get access to information. But if used mis inappropriately, it can actually lead to some pretty detrimental or have detrimental effects on your life. And have you ever considered a career in porn? No comment. Have you? <laughs> no. <laughs> what do you think of Cindy Gallup's Make Love Not Porn platform? Unfamiliar. Okay. And uh, have you had any run-ins today with anyone related to the porn industry or selling sex for money at so, TOA? <laughs> so funny you ask. Uh, the title was a bit misleading because my talk was not about war and porn at all. It was about how the internet has changed. And I had folks approach me uh, that work as dominatrixes or were personal military service. <laughs> and it was, uh, it was fun to see their faces in the audience when the talk began and they realized that 
what I was sharing was not what they actually had signed up for. And so I think TOA probably pulls a pretty wide crowd of people, yeah? Very wide crowd of people. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, you know, see you next year. <laughs> Absolutely. Stay classy. All right. Thank you. Thank you.